In this episode, we take the cheapest Jeep livery we could find with a broken engine, fix it with duct tape and bubble gum, and then try to destroy it. A friend of mine found this Liberty for sale a couple of towns over. It had been to a couple of different shops, and the shops told the owner that the engine was shot and needed to be replaced. When we got there to look at it, there was some coolant in the cylinder head, uh, but the interior was clean, the exterior was clean, the tires were good on it. So I put the engine back together, got it to start, and it definitely had one dead cylinder. So we ended up doing a leak down and a compression test. The left side bank tested good, but this is the result of the right side bank. Tested the right side bank already. Uh, I've got no leak down, no leak down, and no compression on the first cylinder on the passenger side. All right. Get this torn down. Pull this uh, belt tensioner off of there first. Belt tensioner and idler pulley. I'll just set those parts right on the, not nice paint, but the black paint on the car next to me over here. I'm sure a few, few scratches aren't noticeable. And I don't know if this uh, coolant's drained or not. I'll probably check on that first. Has been removed as well as the upper and lower radiator hoses. Continue with the water pump removal. I don't even know if this has to be done or not, but I'm just taking stuff off. Eventually, I'll get to get to what I need to get to to get these heads of the timing chain and the cylinder heads off. Just figure it out as I go. All right, there's only about a million bolts holding this water pump on. Fortunately, they're all different sizes, so they all have to go back in the, the same spot. I'm sure I'll remember that when it's time to put it back together. So two down and 900,000 to go. Well, these are hard to get out for an engine with only 60,000 miles on a rebuild. That might be it. Oh, that's it. Just fell out. So there's a water pump. There's an O-ring. Hopefully that's reusable. It'd be great if I don't have to replace that. That right over there on the hood of the black car. <clears throat> Only a few minutes in, I've already got a broken part. It's a black plastic PVC something. I don't know. It goes in the head. It broke. I'm going to have to find another one somewhere. So those don't look too bad. I'm really worried about getting this manifold off. It's supposed to be one of the hardest parts of this whole job is pulling the exhaust manifold out. And it was, it's uh, watching videos on YouTube. It's probably a pretty good chance we're going to break some bolts and studs. So we shall see how this goes. I'm underneath on the seat shield. The two on the top were easy to get to. It wasn't too bad. Come on the bottom, I got this one here, which wasn't too bad. But there's another one that it looks like the last time this exhaust was put on, it's right behind that clamp right there. And that one's gonna be tough to get to. I'm gonna see if I can loosen that clamp and swing it out of the way so I can get this heat shield off and then start working on the manifold. All right, what are the odds that that's it for this big panel? Uh, I'll bet this goes behind the crank, the crank pulley. So I'm probably gonna have to pull that off next, which is gonna be fun. Not as fun as the exhaust manifold, so. I'm asking for trouble with those. I don't know if I need to remove this, get the power steering pump off, but I guess we'll find out. Now, how do I get this out of my way? There we go, perfect. Right back where it was. It looks like possibly a cam position sensor. And it is so greasy, I can't even find a clip on there to unplug it. Oh, there we go. 
That one's out. Another million bolts hold the timing chain cover on. Looks like. And hope you'll be able to figure out what bolts go to what. Here we go, crank pulley's coming off, finally. I spent the last several hours looking for my pulley puller. Finally found it! Only a few feet from me. Almost there. Maybe almost there. Maybe not. Yeah, I don't know what the manufacturer recommends is the correct method. Uh, this probably isn't it. I'm gonna pry right here on this gasket surface. So we may end up with a leak. I got it removed. And it's uh, quite a bit deeper than I thought. Finally. Yep, look at that. Unfortunately, when it came flying off, it, uh, it did hit the radiator right there. And it looks like that, I can't tell if it has a hole in it now. So in the process of looking at the timing chain, there was a timing chain tensioner and spring. It's kind of sitting right, right here. We pulled the timing chain cover off. I don't think it's supposed to be there and I don't think it was helping very much. So might need to be replaced. It looks like it's got some wear on it. Might have to get a new timing chain tensioner. All right, got the timing chains off. Still have the crank gear on. Whew, what a miracle that was, getting that off. You gotta uh, undo the bolts at the top, drop the chain down, then you gotta hold the chain up to get it out. And just laid it all out right here. Hopefully uh, there's a way to put it all back together. After getting the cylinder heads off, we found out the reason for no compression on the number one cylinder. The valve seat had fallen out of the head. The cylinders looked good, the pistons looked good, everything in the engine looked okay. So I was fortunate enough to find a good pair of used cylinder heads on, on OfferUp or Craigslist or one of those. Uh, they just had a broken valve spring. So I was able to use one of my valve springs, put it in the new heads, and the best part of all was the new heads actually came with a, a PVC pipe like the one that was broken. We put these heads together, I cleaned them up, and they were good to go. The combustion chamber on the new cylinder heads was a little bit different than the heads I had, but I could live with that. Uh, then the gasket kit I ordered showed up, and it was time to put the engine back together. All I really want to do now is clean these cylinder heads up, clean up the mating surface. I'm just going to take a straight edge with some sandpaper and just lightly run it across the surface to clean it. Just enough to get the rust and the old gasket off. We'll run it, run it the other way. Uh, but the reason I'm using this edge is this edge is a lot straighter than using the the flat edge here. I know that from experience of trying to use the flat edge. Uh, when I would sand certain areas, it would clean up certain spots, and then I'd sand other areas, and it would clean up the same spots on where this part of the bar was on. So I know this flat edge here, it's not it's not straight, but this edge here is pretty flat. That's why I'm using this edge here. You can see I cleaned this up pretty good. There's a few spots here I'm a little, a little worried about, but that'll probably sand out. I'm um, pretty close. A little bit more, almost done. All right, we got some pretty good results. About as good as new. Ready to go. All right, here's the other cylinder. Yes, the heads are done, they're clean. I cleaned them off with some brake cleaner. They're a perfectly machined cylinder head surface done with sandpaper in a very precision, haphazard way. And we'll slap these on and hopefully have this thing together and running today. Up. 
Ah. All right, I think one's in, one pin's in. The other one should be right around here somewhere. All right, one cylinder head on. All right, one head down. We're getting very close now. Oh, my microphone's in the way there. Getting real close now. We tried to clean this up as best I could. We put the other, uh, other head gaskets on there. Now we drop on the cylinder head. I don't know if this is correct or not. On top of this cam. All right, so it is pretty much at the top. And there's a line on the crank which is not at the top, which is nowhere near the top. Getting close to finishing up the project, I had to call in my friend Dave to help me button it up, finish putting the engine back together. Finally got it back together, got it started, but it had sort of a rattle. That's when I noticed there's an extra bolt in my box of nuts and bolts, and I couldn't remember exactly where it went. And then it hit me. That's the bolt that goes to the end of the sprocket, the gear sprocket that turns the timing chain, uh, which turns the cam gears. So the next day the engine had to come apart so I could put that bolt in. We got it all put back together again. I then found a gasket or an O-ring lying on the ground that went between the timing chain cover and the block. So that same day the whole thing had to come apart again a third time so I could replace that gasket. Put it all back together and then wouldn't you know it it started up and ran fantastic if you enjoy watching content like this somebody with very little money or talent working on junk cars and getting it running again please hit that subscribe button also hit the bell notification leave comments below if there's projects you'd like to see in the future we took this jeep several hours down the freeway to oregon uh, we hit up some logging trails just to test out the four-wheel drive system. Figuring that it worked good enough, we then went to the Cedar Tree Trail in Tillamook, Oregon and earned the Jeep a badge of honor. Of course, we also had to find some somewhat challenging obstacles to run the Jeeps over. Of course, on this first outing, I had to make sure we didn't come home without any damage. We did happen to hit a tree that ran out in front of me. After earning the Jeep Badge of Honor, it was we went into Washington for uh, another off-road trail there to an area with just some spectacular view. Is it the best Jeep ever made? Probably not. The ride is rough, the seats are hard, the interior is like a four-wheel drive PT Cruiser, and the reliability of the 3.7 liter V6 has a lot to be desired.
And all things considered, we never did destroy it. We didn't even break it. Well, almost didn't break it.